We need to start approaching weight loss differently. Blood sugar over calories and ingredient list length over calories. The reason why I was so successful on my weight loss journey with fasting, with keto, with one meal a day is because these methods put my body in a low blood sugar state. Now, what do I mean by blood sugar? I mean our body's response to the food we eat. For example, when we eat food, certain foods spike our glucose levels high. What happens is our pancreas starts to create insulin. Insulin's job is to bring that glucose into our cells so it can be utilized by the mitochondria. When the mitochondria utilizes our glucose, it turns that into energy. Now, when there's an excess of glucose, what happens is our mitochondria gets stressed. There is a bit of a traffic jam, so there's a bunch of glucose molecules waiting to go through the entire cellular restoration process that happens in the mitochondria. So when there's a traffic jam of glucose, there's too much glucose in the system. This stresses out our mitochondria, and then we have excess glucose in the blood. Excess glucose in the blood gets converted to fat. Our body does this to protect ourselves. So we can't have excess sugar in our bloodstream. Excess sugar damages vital organs and damages vital tissue. If you think of anyone at end of stage diabetes, they end up having kidney disease, right? Their kidneys go. Or some people may lose their vision because they've got sugar, too much excess sugar in their eyes, or there's neuropathy in the brain. Our body stores glucose as fat to help protect our organs from being damaged. Now, that excess glucose can be utilized properly when we don't put it, our body in a state where it's consuming excess glucose. So we wanna be consuming foods in a way that decrease that blood sugar spike. Fats are the number one foods that don't increase our blood sugar spike as intensely, followed by protein and sugar. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Daniela Joy, and this is my weight loss transformation with one meal a day. I lost the weight after going through a lot. I'm still in the process of going through a lot, but I just wanna share with you how I was successful on my journey and that the journey is infinite, it doesn't end. So, I want people to understand this. So when there's too much glucose in the system because we're eating high processed carbohydrates and we're eating foods with long ingredient lists, that's what I mean. Just because something's 90 calories doesn't mean that it's healthy for you. Look at the ingredient list. If that list is more than five and if the first five ingredients in that list is some kind of chemical you can't understand or it includes glucose and fructose, you want to throw that food out as fast as possible. Not only that, these foods that are high in chemicals, it stresses out our mitochondria, just like the excess sugar. And when we're eating these franken foods, it puts our body into a state of metabolic mayhem. When the mitochondria is stressed, how do you expect your body to start burning fat efficiently? How do you expect your body to utilize the glucose as opposed to storing it as fat? So I want people to understand blood sugar over calories. You wanna eat foods that will not spike your blood sugar to the roof. Foods that are mainly fruits and vegetables, things like fiber, things like protein, high fat pieces of food. I want you to really understand how much excess Glucose in our mitochondria stresses out our cells. So basically what happens is when we have so much glucose, it not only like stores it as fat, but what happens is that excess glucose stresses out the electron transport chain, transport chain which is a part of the process of creating ATP. That's con convert, that is converting sugar into, or glucose into energy. So when it, stresses out the electron transport chain. What happens is that we have reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species are species that are very detrimental to our cells. So it's a type of chemical and this causes mayhem in the form of inflammation. It can also damage our cells' DNA. And this is what kind of leads to cancer. This is what kind of leads to chronic inflammation systems. And not only that, these excess 
glucose and the stressing out the mitochondria will lead to fatigue issues. So people feeling, feeling tired, people being hungry all the time because their system's out of whack, people having issues losing weight. Mitochondria health is related to overall health. So I want you guys to understand how far this rabbit hole goes. It's not just about gaining weight, but it can cause mayhem in the form of chronic illnesses, as I mentioned before, like cancer with the damages of DNA. Now, what is the fastest way, what are the most effective way to help reverse all of this? Fasting. Fasting through autophagy helped repair this, helped repair the damage we do when we eat these highly processed carbohydrates, when we eat these highly processed food. Fasting puts us in a state of autophagy. Autophagy, its very definition is repairing the cell. So when autophagy happens, it's going to repair those damaged organelles. It is also going to bring our blood sugar down. So it allows our body a chance to heal. It also helps to bring down those reactive oxygen species. So have you guys ever heard of antioxidants? Well, this relates to that. So when we stress out our entire cells and we put ourselves in a situation where it's just loaded with sugar, loaded with all of this mayhem and stress, not only that, when we have all these excess, the cell basically puts itself in automated cell death. So you're killing your cells in this situation. So what autophagy does, it helps to regulate all of these systems. It helps to regulate the antioxidant system as well. So antioxidants help to combat these reactive oxygen species. And these reactive oxygen species are responsible for many diseases and causing mayhem with our, in our cells. So autophagy helps to deal with that. It also helps to put us in a low blood sugar state because in order to reach autophagy, you need to be in a low blood sugar state and it will give our body a chance to self heal so we're able to start losing weight again. Another way to do this is through a low carb diet, keto or a ketobiotic diet. We wanna get the microbiome into play as well. The microbiome is so important. A lot of us need to take care of our gut health. And not only that, when you eat foods that support our gut health, guess what? It helps to shrink that gut, literally. And foods that you wanna focus on are things like fermented foods, things like kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, pickled olives, or pick of olives. <laughs> olives or pickles or pickled onions is what I wanted to say, or pickled beets. Things like this will help to help set up our gut microbiome, which plays a role in all of this. So I want you guys to understand, we want to eat in a way that lowers our blood sugar because we don't want that excess blood sugar spikes. We don't want those spikes. Those spikes harm literally every organ in our body from our eyes to our cardiovascular system, to our kidneys, to our liver, to everything. So I want you guys to think of weight loss in a way as losing weight by focusing on eating foods that do not spike your sugar. So foods, foods that are clean, foods that are whole, things like fats and proteins. You can't go wrong with fats and proteins. You wanna limit the carbs that are processed. You wanna focus on eating natural, unprocessed carbs. Stay away from things that have gluten in it from in this side of the world. So when I say this side of the world, I'm talking about USA and Canada. If you're in Italy and you're in Europe and you're using that natural grain, you're good to go because you guys are not dealing with the toxic version of that. So you want to focus on eating healthy carbs. What are healthy carbs? It's fruit, vegetables, things like farro, things like whole grains, ancient grains, sprouted grains. I love my big little bread because that is a sprouted grain. You also want to focus on not consuming chemical ridden food. You don't want these foods with these yellow dyes, these toxins, these words that you cannot pronounce. You wanna focus on eating high fat and high protein, getting most of your carbs from fruits and vegetables. If you're going to have those ancient grains or those sprouted grains or the things like farro and quinoa, have those things around your workout. You want to be able to utilize those carbs in a way that it will be used for energy and not stored as fats. You want to fast occasionally. Fasting, again, I mentioned autophagy early. Autophagy puts us in a stage of healing, healing ourselves from all of this glucose damage, all of these damages from these processed foods. Occasionally fast, whether it be intermittent fasting, 
whether it be a prolonged fast, a good solid per prolonged fast, a good solid 72 hour fast can help you reverse a lot of things, but make sure when you're fasting, you have a plan to get off. If you don't want to give up your carbs, food order hack. Have a shot of apple cider vinegar before you eat. Why? Because apple cider vinegar has been shown to reduce that blood sugar spike by 30%. Then have some fruits and vegetables, some fiber. Do not fear fruits. Fruits are fine. The sugar in fruit, don't fear it because fruit is found naturally in nature and it's paired with fiber, which is going to help bring that spike down. And then eat your fats and your proteins followed by eating your carbohydrates last. So carbs you wanna focus on, I have a list here. Sweet potato, quinoa, beans, lentils, chickpeas, oatmeal, steel cut oats versus rolled oats. Why? Because steel cut oats have more of the nutritional value left over. Brown rice as opposed to white rice, farro, bulgur, sprouted grains and ancient greens. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I just wanted you guys to understand why this epidemic is happening. If you made it this far into the video, just type in the word ancient greens and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.